Hey guys, so today I'm going to show you how I do my line lists coloring because that's something a lot of people seem intimidated by. And so I'm going to show you how I do it. I put my lines on multiply. I lower the transparency to 50% usually. And then we can get started. Now the bottom layer is black and transparent because it's a personal preference of mine. makes the background less bright and shows me the gaps easily. So what I did is I made a group layer for every color so that it will be one base color layer for everything and then the rest will be non-alpha layers. It will make it a lot easier to work, you don't have to mind your edges at, the al at all time. So it's a really useful way to go on it. Now for how you're going to use it, the brush is going to be a soft brush can even be a bit transparent. Very important is that soft edge because otherwise it's not gonna look very organic, it's gonna look forced and it's gonna look pixelated. So let's get started with our base color. Let's get we start out with the blue of course and we get going. Now a very important thing is that the layer beneath the color you're gonna do next that you overlap so to avoid gaps so here the blue i overlap quite a bit in areas that won't have any blue actually so let's just color this in why is it important that you do the overlap though it avoids you from getting gaps again it would make it look more natural because it goes in a softer edge over to the other part there's no gaps the uh, coloring is more natural looking. You can always go back later if you notice you don't have enough overlap or if you have too much color sticking out from certain areas you can always fix it up later as well if you notice later on that there's some transparent places you just fix it up no harm done that is the joy of digital art of course. So yeah let's go over the ways you can do the shading in this technique you, if you have an own shading technique that works for you perfect use that what I personally prefer to do is I prefer to use a blend tool and just go nuts so where I'm gonna put my light source is in the right top corner it will lighten the sh side of Tony's head mostly the back some of the, s of the front of the skull but not a lot and that shoulder wouldn't actually have any light but I'm gonna give it some light just to show you the basics so what I do is I take a separate layer for my first lighting which would be the darkest of the two light colors I'm gonna do that with the brush I did my base layer there we go map it out okay now we take our blend tool and we just blend till we're happy with it again shading you can always go back later mess around with the transparency the line settings and you can fix a lot of what you find in later issues so no harm done if it's not perfect I'm not working this picture to be perfect I'm just doing this to demonstrate the concept basically I did this in an hour I usually take several hours for any picture so this really is just a quick demonstration so what I do uh, because I'm a bit of a lazy asshole I use a blend tool so it's a blend brush it gives me the color I need it blends on its own sometimes I do need to blend it a little extra but in general it makes it very easy to just do it very quickly so yeah let's do the darker shades now and just get going with the picture now here I decided that I didn't like the blue after a bit so I'm gonna change it I also had the wrong layer issue in this part so I had to make some changes and well you're gonna see it I'm just gonna mess around with the shading and the saturation of the base layer so yeah there we go 
very important is always mind your edges because you're using this shading to give your figure a shape because you're gonna turn off the, la the lines at the end so very important is to mind your edges this is gonna make the make or break your picture So what sometimes happens is that your edge does get a little bit too rough or that you have transparent spots. So fix up the transparent spots in your base layer. It takes a few seconds, just go back over it. And those are gone. It usually shows up better when you've done some shading. So don't beat yourself up about it. I used to be like, oh, I, I fucked up. But just fix it, no harm done, and then we can go. Now, for the edges, as you can see, sometimes when you turn off the lines, the edges will be rougher, especially on the outside edges. This is important. So what you do with that is you take your smudge tool, a smooth round smudge tool, so not the uh, special flingly kinds, and you just go over your edge, so in a smooth motion, and it will put your pull your layer straight your lines straight like you see here doom, doom, doom. there we go that's a more nice edge so that is how you quickly fix it up without messing around with your eraser and your solid brush so okay let's get going to the next colors just the same concept Sometimes you have to mess around with your layer, uh, your uh, multiplied layer a bit because, well, not all colors are gonna be very visible with the multiply option. So, okay, let's do this. Of course, for black and white, don't use black and white basic shading techniques. Just use a color similar to it and use your shading to define it. There's some lines you do have to define by drawing lines, of course. I tend to fake in those lines with the smudge tool on a very big mode and just go with it. And that's something that does help define your character. Your character. There we go. As you can notice, my anatomy is not perfect. I'm pretty much a beginner. I've only been doing digital art for six and a half months by now. So just sharing what I've already learned. And I'm in no way an expert at any of this. It's just sharing what works for me. What I like to do with fabric, like I show here, is I put some stitches on it. It makes it look more finished and it helps you define it better so there we go finish up the eyes his eyes are way too tiny but who cares okay So here we got a pretty much completely finished tasky. So as you can see with the layers off, you can still clearly see Tony's form, his deed, his suit, everything's pretty well defined. So there's, it's pretty much how you go about it. You can do this in a cartoony style, you can do this in a more natural style. Of course, this also is part of the techniques for very realistic, almost photograph-like paintings. So it's just something that for anything where you want to turn the edge off, you should use. Um, I usually tend to use this a lot to make me <laughs> to f just hide the fact that I'm 
suck at line art <laughs> because I really suck at line art and it's just it makes the picture look more finished for a lot of people because wow there's no layers in there so a lot of people think this looks more professional I personally just think it's a fun thing to do because it challenges me to get better at my shading basically but whatever you do with it have fun with it experiment with it play around with it make it your own and just enjoy doing the art well I hope you guys have enjoyed this little tutorial I hope everything was clear and I hope I uh, helped you out a little bit have fun arting and keep at it you'll get better that's how I've been doing cheers